Hey, what's going on, networkers? Um, just wanted to do a quick demonstration of uh, using uh, GNS3 in the IOU VM and authenticating to a Radius server. Um, actually, the built-in Radius server function for the NAS uh, uh, function on server 2008. Um, <clears throat> This is the topology that I'll be working with. It's in GNS3, it's not 100% configured, but what's going on here is essentially, um, it's the uh, it's a data center setup that is talking to two branch offices that utilize the resources back at the data center. Um, so that's kind of the basis of this lab, and right now the data center portion is configured, which is here um, for my uh, network. And all of the switches in that network have been configured to talk back to an authentication server, which is actually the local machine that the GNS3 is running on um, to authenticate to. Um, and I'll show you how that topology looks here. This is what it looks like to GNS3. This is actually a cloud interface. That's really my loopback address, uh, loopback adapter on, on this um, machine here to authenticate for the um, for the uh, radius uh, uh, access, we're actually for network access because um, I have this server, this actual machine that you're looking at right here, um, it has multiple roles. So I use the server for a lot during my lab, um, you know, during different lab exercises. But essentially, you know, I'll show you guys the uh, configuration of the radius uh, server itself. You know, I gotta make sure you got your network policy and access uh, server role um, uh, installed. Um, you gotta make sure you get your radius client configured. Uh, which is the device that would be forwarding the radius request for authentication um well which is the device that will be attempting uh, requesting authentication from the radius server um forwarding would be a proxy and we're not doing proxy in this case um we're actually th authenticating with the local devices as you can see each device with their respective loopback address has been configured using um you know the the cisco uh, uh template that microsoft has implemented and then another thing you want to make sure that you do is you configure your uh, your network policies, um, and that is to for your authorization um, um, portion of it uh, to get into like an enable privilege mode. And one that was actually one of the things that I ran into um, during the configuration of this. Um, I would advise if you don't have a lot of uh, hands-on experience of configuring AAA from scratch in a production network or a production style network. I would say definitely lab it up and practice with it. Um, you know, you follow the Cisco docs, it's pretty simple. Uh, Cisco gives you a, a, a good walkthrough of how to configure AAA authentication um, to a radius server. And like I said, it's pretty straightforward. But, you know, practical, I always say, you know, practical in theory is two different approaches. You know, uh, you, you want to make sure that you, you get some um, time in. Because, uh, you know, coming in as a support role going into a lot of these networks, AAA has already been um, established. So as a CCNA or a, even sometimes a CCMP, you know, when you're coming into a lot of these networks, you're not really implementing anything. You're coming in from a break-fix perspective. So a lot of people don't have the configuration side of AAA down. So I, that's why I say, especially for the certification exams, you know, make sure that you study um, and, and get some hands-on practice with it because... You know, it only makes you a better engineer for when you get up to that higher level when you're starting to do customer implementations. You can think about the network from a whole. You know, think about it from a security standpoint, think about it from a reachability standpoint, and a reliability standpoint. Um, so that's just my little two cents on making sure that you guys, you know, practice, practice configuring all these different options that these Cisco routers um, offer. Um, but, uh, Go ahead and uh, go into the uh, session here. And we'll first we'll look, so what we're gonna do um, for this example, we're going to log in, we're gonna be consoled into this uh, switch here, and we're gonna actually attempt to log into this switch via the authentication server. Um, and that authentication server is actually sitting back behind the access switch as I showed you guys on the GNS3 topology. But essentially we're gonna log in from access switch one to core switch one. Um, using the radius. Uh, now, let's go back to the actual configuration of the server. So you'll see that I have the Windows group that it's uh, being selected as the Cisco radius group that I created in my Active Directory. Um, we go to users here, and this is the the user group, and the members of that group is Cisco and my uh, Courtney account and my C Baxter account. 
Um, so that those are the usernames that I set up for uh, use of the uh, authentication. Um, and we'll go ahead and look at the DC switch one, the, 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 the distributed core, the data center distributed core switch one. Show run section triple A. We'll do that and then show run section radius. Uh, spell that wrong? I sure did. Radius. Okay. All right. So, um, so first thing you know that you got to do is make sure that you specify your radius server, which is here. Uh, that's the IP address, the one seventy two sixteen twenty. That's the IP address of the server that we're authenticating to. The authorization, authorization, and the accounting port. Um, the key is uh, Cisco, is a Cer the uh, Cer key um, between the two. Um, and then you have uh, your AAA portion of the configuration. And this uh, side, I actually configured it. It's using AAA authentication login. I created a custom uh, method list for this instead of using the default login method list. And I specified group radius, which is the radius servers, all radius servers configured, and the local um, backup, the local database as a backup if the radius server is unreachable. Um, now, and now remember to keep this in mind that this only happens, this local authentication only happens if the radius server does not get a response. If the server responds and it fails authentication, it will never go to the local database. So if you do have some issues authenticating to your radius server after you set this up, uh, just break the access to the server and then authenticate using the local database and you should be able to log into the router, um, just an FYI. Um, one of the things that I also wanted to point out, like I said, um, the practical side of configuring this thing, um, you run into little things and little quirks as you're running into, uh, you know, as you're setting up the uh, radius portion of it, especially on the server 2008. Um, one of the things that I was running into was that my radius server wasn't properly sourcing my interface, wasn't properly sending my source, uh, sending packets via the source interface that I specified. Um, so one of the things that I did is I had to modify the, the attribute 4, which is your NAS, your network access server uh, uh, attribute. And this is the IP address that the client handle, hands the radius server um, for the authentication saying that you're getting permission to, to authenticate to the server. So if this IP address is not uh, in your radius packet um, and your client is not configured for that IP address, which would be back on this page here, um, then you're gonna get a failed authentication message and you'll see that in your Windows logs. Um, so like I said, that's one of those things that, you know, start getting getting familiar with it and, and configuring because going from a practical standpoint into a, uh, a theory lab standpoint is totally different. So, you know, practice on using free radius. If you have uh, resources, practice on using server 2008, server 2002, um, I mean, server 2003, um, for implementing your radius server. So uh, one of the things that we're gonna do is we're gonna run um, Wireshock and it's currently already running on my interface for the loopback address. You know what, and I'll go ahead and start it from scratch. So we'll go ahead, we'll just go ahead and close Wireshark all together and we'll start a new capture. You see we have the GNS3 interface selected, which is my loopback address that's there. Um, we have this option selected for radius, so it's only filtering out the radius uh, packets. And we'll go ahead and authenticate. Uh, like I said, we're going to go into access switch one and log into core switch one. Uh, and it should be using the authentication for radius. And it should, oh, and one of the things I also wanted to point out is with radius attributes, uh, you know, as it authenticates to the server, the, the server then hands the, 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 the client the permissions that that particular user is allowed to access. And one of the things that you have to do is configure your uh, attributes. And the attribute that I have specified for this particular radius group is privilege level 15. So I should be able to log into this, um, to the router um, and be dumped directly into privilege level, uh, uh, privilege exec mode. Um, so I don't actually have to do an enable command and then I could be able to start doing my configurations from my using those specified usernames in that in that group. So we'll go ahead and uh, pull up the you get the user prompt logged in here. 
So here we're accessing the IP address of the distributed switch for it or the core switch one. Um, so we're going to use the username that we have configured Cisco. We'll put the corresponding password. And give it a second here, unless I spelled that wrong. And we'll know in a heartbeat. Okay, so we're in there now. So, server's acting a little crazy, I think, because I'm running Snagit at the same time. This is, uh, my iMac is the, is the host machine on this, so it's only a dual core, or I think 8 gigs of RAM. I can't remember the stats on this thing. But as you can see, I'm actually logged into the switch now, and I do a show privilege. And you see we're at 15, config T, you know, and then we'll go ahead. You see that. You know, like I said, we're we're in there, and if we do a show log, we should see that Cisco username uh, pop in in the console. So you see, configured from console by Cisco, blah 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 blah. So, um, you know, you, you'll see that authentication is working, and we'll go back over here and we'll look at the packets, and you see the authentication request. There's a duplicate request, and it, they, they, you see all that the hiccup that kind of happened. So. Uh, that was the uh, packet resetting itself and it, the server detecting that it's a duplicate request. Um, so it keeps track of that using that ID, the request identifier, the packet identifier. But if we look at the request that went back to the server um, and look at the radius protocol um, uh, information, you can see the attributes that I set that from, from the router going to the radius server. I sent the username Cisco um, with the encrypted password um, remember the NAS IP address, which is attribute four, which is the IP address that corresponds to the client that it's coming from, or the source interface. Um, and once it got to the radius server, the radius server did its look up and said, oh, "Okay, well, you know, I'll go, I'll respond back, we'll give you the access to login, um, and it's going to pass all the attributes that this uh, that particular username is is able to uh, 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 utilize." And back here, this is the attribute for the Cisco Privilege Level 15. Um, and it passed that shell Privilege Level 15, and then that's how I was able to log in directly into Privilege Exec mode um, without having to do the enable mode using the Radius server. Um, so that is, and this is also a little insight. If you don't have uh, TACX or using Cisco ACS, uh, TACX is, allows you to do author authorization um, and so you can do this a little easier than you can with Radius and using the attributes. So that's something to keep in mind. Radius is a little bit more difficult. Uh, of course, being industry standard, uh, but Cisco has or TechX, which has a little bit more features from uh, authentication authorization standpoint um, that allows the implementation to be a lot easier. So, um, you know, I would definitely try to get your hands on Cisco ACS and, you know, practice on uh, TechX as well. But, um, you know, you see that, uh, like I said, we got the radius authentication working um, and we were able to log into the device using that username. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, I would like to see some of you guys' lab videos and lab demonstrations. Let me know how you guys, uh, you know, like the stuff that I'm doing now. All right, later.